I think you guys are up for a treat. We've got a series of talks that I think dealing from marketing to pest management. And I think some of the highlights for these meetings are going to be in this afternoon when we break out into working groups and we really have some discussion about how do we reach this magic number of perhaps 100 bushel soybeans. At this point, we don't have any recipe that we can hand you guys, but I think it's putting the pieces together, it's conducting perhaps some of the different topics that we're going to be dealing with, which, is, um, which would include high yield contest, tr just trying, testing different things out, and then trying to be proactive in our management and building our soil health and soil quality components. Our program, I'm going to start with our program, and uh, first person on our program is Barry Dunn. He's our dean of the Ag, Col Ag College. Barry, you want to give our welcoming? And some words of wisdom. And here's our. Well, thank you, Dave, and welcome everybody. It's it's great to be to have you here on campus today, and certainly want to commend South Dakota Soybean um, and and the board and the leadership of Jeremy and Sarah and the whole team, plus our team um, at SDSU, uh, our plant science team. It's really. Uh, a powerhouse group of people and they put together a great program today. Um, I, uh, I, I know that uh, you've seen a lot of changes on campus. I, uh, in 1971 I sat right about where that gentleman is in the blue shirt and um, by a girl from Platt who never talked to me the whole year, I don't think. I took chemistry in here. So, but it's a, it's a brand new room actually and, and we have a lot of technology and it's a, it's a really good learning atmosphere. Uh, and I think, as, as Dave said, the breakout sessions will really be um, very valuable to you. Update you a little bit on the college uh, and the plant science team. We've got, uh, as you probably know, we had, uh, uh, we had a big turnover in staff, and, uh, and it's been a major concern uh, for all of us. We've got three new people hired into the positions that, that Larry Osborne and some others have, have left. And so those three people, um, one of them's, uh, two of them are on board. Nathan Mueller's here today, and, and uh, I don't know if, I don't see him right now, but uh, should get to know Nathan. He's a really good, there he is, a really good young man, uh, a, a really strong team member. Um, and our plant science department head search committee is, is moving ahead. Uh, Again, we lost our department head to Iowa State for, for some big salary re differences, and we're in the marketplace. We've got five people coming to campus in April to interview, uh, or three coming to campus, two internal candidates, so we're excited about that. It's, re it's really important to, uh, to get those positions filled, and, and we understand that. Um, a lot of people are asking about federal sequestration and what it meant, means to the College of Ag because a lot of our funding does come from the federal government. Uh, basically, it'll mean we have to, uh, it's, it's an 8% cut, um, and we're, that's the equivalent in, in the experiment station of about three scientists that we'll have to shrink, and on extension, um, it's, it's roughly the same thing. We, we have to shrink. Uh, the Ag Experiment Station, and we have to shrink extension uh, because of these cuts, and, and, and that's what we're going to do. We've, uh, uh, it's a difficult situation. We're actually, you know, um, talking to people who are losing their jobs, and so it's, it's a tough deal. Um, on the state funding, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, spent a lot of time last year trying to convince uh, uh, the governor's staff and, and lawmakers about the importance of agricultural research and uh, um, you know I guess we've got a couple days left and and we'll see it doesn't do, actually we've got we've got some new funding from the Board of Regents which we appreciate very much uh, but um, uh, the other the other aspects of, of funding look a little tough um, you might notice if you came in from the north, where we do have funding for a new headhouse greenhouse project that does affect uh, you and, and, and farmers across the state. Uh, that funding came from, we have three major private donors, uh, well, Crop Improvement, Foundation Seed, and a, and a major private donor, an individual, not a company right now, and, uh, and, some, uh, and a pool of uh, student heft money, it's called, to get that project built. 
And so uh, with, without the generosity of those of, of private individuals, we'd, we'd really be in trouble. With it. But we're, we're really excited about that project. Hopefully in 20, the fall of 2014, our scientists will be able to move from the field into some new greenhouses uh, that you see up there. Um, the, uh, I, I think I had this set up. There's, uh, had a nice conversation with, with Daryl, uh, one of the good farmers of Brookings County, best farmers of Brookings County, about the power of, of or we were talking about cash rents. And, and so I wanted to show you the power of, uh, of, of information. So we were talking about risk and reward and, and who, who bore the most risk and, and, uh, and which is the most limiting resource. And, and I'll argue that, that um, forever, that, that knowledge and information is the scarcest resource in, in farming and in agriculture, and it is the key advantage. So I just thought I'd show you for a second if, if everything stayed up here. I, I'd really encourage you to, to, if you haven't been on the iGrow's website, to, to go there, and I'll, and I'll give you a, a real life example why. So th this is in real time, and I went to the soybean site, and, and you can see um, articles that were posted uh, just in this last week, plus some technical ar articles over on the side. And, and the one that I picked out was managing um, 